fourth generation nuclear weapons, guys. We finally have a name for the weapon they used on MH370. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Lowell Wood. Lowell Wood was mentioned on Monday's live stream where we dug into John Knuckles as one of the de co-developers of the nuclear pumped x-ray laser of the nuclear pumped x-ray laser and today we have a direct connection between lowell wood who worked with john knuckles and gravity manipulation boom you just heard it correctly we have a direct connection to lowell wood john knuckles and using nuclear weapons for gravitational manipulation. I'll even take it one step further. Lowell Wood proposed building, you're not going to believe this, a black hole super weapon. Black hole super weapon, literally the exact same thing that I proposed a year ago that we could make based on this technology. So we are currently on the fourth generation of thermonuclear weapons. We started with just an A-bomb, just a bomb that is a fission bomb that releases neutrons. And from there, we moved on to the second generation of thermonuclear weapons. Thermonuclear weapons that have a first stage A-bomb and a second stage fusion bomb. The third generation is an efficient form of our thermonuclear weapons, of our two-stage fission and, and fusion. The fourth generation of thermonuclear weapons is a clean fusion bomb. A fusion, a second-stage fusion payload that is detonated not by an A-bomb, but by a non-fission trigger. Fission is equivalent to an A-bomb, so a non-fission trigger is a non-A-bomb that detonates our fusion payload. That And that fusion payload can be adjusted to release a lot of neutrons or a little bit of neutrons, a.k.a. a-neutronic. So here's another video I've got ready to go that explains the fourth generation. I could play more of it, but I don't. I just kind of explained the first three generations. So you should be pretty familiar. But if not, here's a link to Destiny, is the name of the YouTube channel, Fourth Generation Nuclear Weapons. I'll post a link in the chat for you guys if you're on the YouTube. And what is that? In short, the fourth generation is the total antithesis of the first generation, known as a pure fusion weapon. The fourth generation is a hypothetical hydrogen bomb that does not need a fission primary explosive to ignite the fusion of deuterium and tritium, like in the aforementioned thermonuclear weapons. For many years now, designers of such weapons have been researching whether it is possible to trigger the high pressure and temperature required to ignite a fusion reaction without using fission at all. The secondary stage of a thermonuclear bomb without the primary the main reason weapon developers want to create such a device is that it would require no fissile material and would, therefore, be much easier to develop in secret than the standard thermonuclear weapons. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we are on fire, chat. We have been on fire. The part that's most convincing to me is how I predicted this. What they say in science is that usually science is correct if it's able to predict future events, right? But the best part about this is coming up with predictions based on the MH370 videos and then realizing they're all real. Realizing they're all real things that I didn't even know about. Realizing that, which I'll look at in a second, that Lowell Wood literally was working on a black hole fusion bomb. But pure fusion weapons offer an interesting possibility beyond just the ability to make them in secret. They could generate arbitrarily small nuclear yields because no critical mass of fissile fuel needs to be assembled for detonation, as with a conventional fission primary. This would mean a significant decrease in collateral damage from fallout, 
because a fourth generation nuclear weapon would not create the same radioactive byproducts associated with the other three generations. If fission can be removed from the nuclear weapons completely, we would have a weapon with the initial impact of a thermonuclear weapon, but without the horrifying radioactive fallout that traditionally follows. Wow. So there it is. They say, it, if we can get rid of the A-bomb portion, now we can make miniaturized, specialized thermonuclear weapons. There it is. That was the missing link that I was looking for. That was the missing link that I was looking for. I wanted to find, how did we go from making these big booms to now we're making a detonation that's large enough and yet small enough that it encapsulates a Boeing 777, but that's it. It annihilates or teleports a Boeing 777, but it doesn't do anything else to the background. Doesn't even blow the sky away. And here we go. You just explained it. So because we were able to make our non-fission triggers, now what they were doing, what have they been doing for the last 30 years? They've been creating specialized thermonuclear weapons. Thermonuclear weapons just like the ones in the MH370 videos that serve a very specific purpose. It can annihilate a Boeing 777 or teleport it, whatever the hell they're doing in the videos. Annihilation stock is going through the roof right now, by the way, guys. Annihilation stock is going through the roof. I'm really starting to second guess everything about what they're doing with the plane. But I still think very, very high probability is an actual, actual wormhole. So a clean fusion bomb. Clean fusion bomb would be the thing that we are looking for here. Now, we already spoke about John Knuckles just as a side John Knuckles was working on the Project Bravo, Project Ripple, Ripple Project. He's the one that helped figure out how to increase efficiency by basically perfect align, perfectly aligning your waves. So you just imagine in a simple example, you have two waves that are going at one another, aiming one right, right at one another, and then right at the middle when they hit, they annihilate. They annihilate each other. That's essentially what we're trying to do with our thermonuclear weapons, except for at the middle of that, we want our fusion payload. We want our fusion payload. And so I was asking, I was asking Grok, actually. After our last stream, I said, search for, this was Monday night. Search for references of John Knuckles talking about a neutronic fusion and or wormholes. So I shot that to Grok because I wanted to know if there's any evidence that John Knuckles was working on having nuclear weapons manipulate space-time. That's what I was looking at. And the answer came back, no, there was nothing. And then this happened. Shout out to Tom Hudson one more time, because he's the one that found this. It says, Lowell also proposed, this was Lowell Wood. Lowell Wood, which is a colleague of John Knuckles, all of a sudden he posted this, said Lowell also proposed to use nuclear explosives to create black holes. In theory, ordinary black holes are collapsed stars so dense that even light cannot escape their powerful gravitational pulls. Although none have ever been detected with certainty, they are thought to widely populate the universe and individually to be many miles in diameter. Lowell wanted to create miniature ones. He developed a scheme by whereby the matter for a proposed black hole would sit at the center of a special type of nuclear explosive. When detonated, the bomb would exert its force upon the matter and compress it into a tiny black hole. Wow. Wow. Lowell. Okay. His name is Lowell, not Lowell. Whatever. You guys got the point. Um, There you go, guys. Does that sound familiar to you guys? We're going to put something at the center of our fusion device, and then we're going to compress it into a black hole. It sounds very, very similar 
to the MH370 videos. Extremely similar. So when we are seeing references the black holes, that's literally those nuclear engineers saying they're ripping open the fabric of space-time. They're manipulating the zero-point energy to create a black hole. And the black hole is going to collapse on itself. We learned this from Hawking radiation. Hawking radiation, the only question is how fast will a black hole dissipate? Which is the equivalent of asking how fast will, will your wormhole close? You are you're essentially doing the equivalent of trying to keep the door open as long as you can. You're using this space time, this energy to create a geometry by which your object goes from over here to over here. And you need to keep that wormhole open as long as possible. That black hole open as long as possible. Because what it wants to do is close. It wants to close ASAP. This document connects directly from uh knuckles to wood and directly to space-time manipulation now i couldn't believe this star warriors in here there's actually this scientific paper which is the yahtzee of all yahtzees because then after i read that after i read that here actually where is it let me close this right here after I read that, I said, okay, search for Lowell Wood. Search for Lowell Wood for any references that connect to black holes, wormholes, or gravitational waves. Why did I say that? Well, because I just literally saw from that book, it literally talked about Lowell Wood wanting to make black hole weapons, right? And so it doesn't mention anything. It meant... uh. And then I say, well, why? Or it, it, meant, it doesn't, I kind of mentioned some of this, but not really. And then I say, well, here's an excerpt from the book. How did you miss this? And next thing I know, it's saying, oh, well, there's scientific papers. Uh, where is it? Somewhere in here. I think down here at the bottom. Would. Wood proposed using nuclear explosions to generate detectable gravity waves, ripples in space-time predicted by Einstein. What? So I saw this from Grok. And of course, I clicked on the link. What do you guys think we're about to see here? What do you guys think we're about to see on the screen right now? Well, let's just go right to it, chat. Here's the scientific paper. Gravitational radiation production using nuclear explosions. Who are the scientific authors? The, the authors of this scientific paper? Looks like George Chaplin, John Knuckles, and Lowell Wood. Lowell Wood. I don't know how you say that. It is shown that it may be possible to produce gravitational radiation powers in excess of one erg per second with modest-sized nuclear explosions. The gravitational radiation intensity near the explosion may be significant or sufficiently high to be detectable, permitting general relativity experiments to be conducted in terrestrial environments. Wow. We're dabbing. Uh, well, there you have it, chat. I never would have expected that we would just have a scientific paper right there saying that they were, I mean, you don't write a scientific paper like that unless you're at a minimum expecting it to be true. At a minimum, that's your hypothesis, right? They're saying, there you go. Nukes can produce high frequency gravity waves. Nuclear weapons are manipulating space-time. The only question is, how much manipulation, how much bending of space-time is happening? And that, the question is, well, how powerful can you make your nuclear weapon? How confident are we of the ceiling of our current thermonuclear weapons? We were making bombs in the 40s that were destroying entire cities. And supposedly they got a million times more powerful than that. What if they got even more than that? 
What if they're infathomably more powerful? They're definitely manipulating space-time. There's no question of it. General relativity says if you put enough energy into a dense enough region of space-time, you are going to manipulate space-time. You are going to bend space-time. So there you have it, guys. There's the scientific paper right there that directly connects. These are the guys that developed a clean fusion bomb. They developed a fourth generation thermonuclear weapon. And here they are. And this is 19, what was it, 1974? 1974. They were saying, we can test general relativity. When you're talking about general relativity, you're talking about space time. Testing whether or not space is an empty vacuum or whether or not we can actually bend space time as human beings.